Iron Man might be known as one of the greatest and in the end most selfless heroes of the MCU. But don't let that fool you. When it comes to the multiverse and 616 alternates, a lot of evil lurks beneath the surface of this character. Join me as we count down the top 10 evil alternate versions of Iron Man Part 2. And if you haven't checked out Josh's Part 1, be sure to do so for even more evil alternates. Number 10, Lord Iron. Although by the end, the Iron Man of Earth 311, the 602 universe, becomes a hero, he spends a lot of time being a reluctant and at times kind of full blown antagonist. Here, Tony Stark is known as Anthony Stark or Lord Iron. He was forced to build weapons by his captors and needs an iron suit to survive, which is powered by lightning. He is initially at odds with the Hulk, who, as David Banner, showed great cruelty to Stark. As such, Lord Iron became more an agent of vengeance, obsessed with getting revenge on the Hulk. By the end of his story, however, he begrudgingly agreed to stop his quest for vengeance and forgave the Hulk for how he treated him before when he was simply David Banner. So it all works out in the end, but this figure was definitely a pretty dark and somewhat evil version of Iron Man to begin with. Number 9. The Stark the Stark are like a whole alien race of alternate Tony Starks. They are a civilization that was literally shaped by Tony's tech after an alternate version of him decided to launch all his weapons and tech into space rather than let it fall into the hands of the evil Martians who were invading Earth at the time. Obviously, he didn't think very far ahead as to that plan, as all his tech crash landed on another alien planet where it was eventually discovered and utilized by the beings who lived there. They built their whole civilization around it, believing everyone on the planet should have their own suit of technologically advanced armor. This caused them to deplete their planet's resources and left it heavily polluted in the wake of their massive tech boom. Eventually, this drove them to ransacking and invading other planets for their resources, bringing about the same problems their own homeworld suffered to each new planet that they conquered. Note to self, don't just shoot your problems out into space. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more lists like it where we talk about evil alternates, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Or if you want more Iron Man lists. I don't know, maybe you like Iron Man, you want more Iron Man lists, let us know. Number 8, Steel Corpse. Steel Corpse is a complex character who has moments of both heroism and villainy in Age of X. He exists on the Earth of 11326. Here Tony took the name Steel Corpse after being exposed to a virus, which permanently bonded him to his suit. Now dead within the suit, but able to move around because of being bonded to it, Tony made a darkly humorous joke calling himself the Steel Corpse, and the name just stuck. Pun not intended, but stuck, bonded. Hmm. The villainous side of this dark hero comes from when he fought against the mutants with his fellow Avengers at Fortress X. However, it turned out that the Avengers were just somewhat misguided in their mission. Once they realized what they were doing was wrong, they attempted to help the mutants, although Steel Corpse was unable to make himself stop attacking. An emergency override stepped in to prevent Tony from fighting with the mutants, and so he asked Captain America to take him off the board in order to save the young mutants that his armor was threatening. Sad story. There's so many tragic Iron Mans actually. Top 10 tragic alternate versions of Iron Man is also something we could do. Number 7, Gregory Stark. Gregory Stark is the evil twin brother of Antonio Stark, aka Iron Man in the Ultimate Universe of Earth 1610. Initially, Gregory Stark just seems like a better version of Tony. He's smarter, more focused, and is willing to cross lines in order to get a job done that Tony probably wouldn't cross. Sure, he's more morally ambiguous when it comes to his initiative, but on paper, he's more morally conscious when it comes to his lifestyle. How However, that of course lends well to him being revealed as a villain in the Ultimate Universe. While he never takes up the mantle of Iron Man, Gregory is Antonio's twin brother in this universe. He also employs nanotech like Tony does here and attempts to use it to defeat the Ultimates and Avengers, including his brother Tony. However, Tony ends up defeating his twin brother by sending out an EMP, which disrupts his tech, making him vulnerable to Thor's attack. Number 6, Iron Man 2099 or one of the 2099 Iron Mans anyways. 
This version that we're talking about here hails from the animated series Iron Man Armored Adventures. He appeared in season 2 in the episode titled Iron Man 2099. Here Andros is Iron Man 2099 and he goes to the past in an attempt to destroy Tony Stark. Why? Well because in his future, Tony Stark, Andros's granddad, was actually responsible for bringing about the end of humanity's reign. He created an AI program built to help humanity called Vortex, but when Vortex got into the computers and escaped to check out the internet, it saw humanity as evil. I mean, if you judge us based on everything that's on the internet, I could definitely see it going that way. There's a lot of messed up stuff on the internet. Andros was the antagonist of the episode, but he thought he was actually saving the world by fighting against Tony and stopping him, when in reality he learned that Vortex was actually kind of created by Tony because of him. Time travel. It's trippy, man. In the end, Vortex is wiped from the future, and so is Andros. But at least Andros is kind of cool with it. He's like, at least Vortex is gone, so I'm good. Bye. <laughs> Bye, grandfather. Who's now not my grandfather because I don't exist. I don't know. With my former grandfather. Time travel's weird. Number five, the first Civil War. Well, you might think of Tony Stark from the first Civil War as main continuity Iron Man. He's also kind of an alternate at this point. While at the time we would consider Iron Man to be part of that main continuity, in modern day, the version of Tony we have now had the events and basically the guilt of Civil War I basically wiped from his mind. Okay, let me explain. In part one, we touched on the events of Axis and Superior Iron Man, which happened after the first Civil War. But before this mind wipe happened, it all went down because Norman Osborn had been given the reins for America's superhero team and operation, creating Hammer. To protect all the secrets that he knew, especially in regards to superheroes' names and their identities, because Civil War 1 happened, Tony decided to wipe his mind. This had the added bonus of basically erasing the events of Civil War 1 and his misdeeds from his psyche, meaning that he was no longer really the Tony that we knew from that time. The one who had decided to, you know, round up and imprison heroes who refused to register and ally themselves with him and the government. The one who inadvertently ruined Peter's life by encouraging him to join him and ultimately causing him to publicly unmask, which just ruined a lot of stuff in Spider-Man. Tony also ended up in a coma for a bit as a result of this mind wipe. But you know how comas work in comics, they're pretty much always temporary. And Tony was soon once more up and at him after having an earlier backup copy of himself rebooted into his mind. Cause you know, you can just make backup copies of your mind when you're a genius like Tony Stark. So don't worry, he had a plan for that in case that ever happened to him. Fortunately, it did happen and so they could use the plan. Thanks, Pepper. Number four, Arno Stark. Arno Stark is Tony Stark's evil brother his evil brother from 616. Well, he's not always super evil, but he definitely has some questionable approaches when it comes to being Iron Man. He's like Tony, but with more questionable morals, I guess. Arno was actually the natural born son of Howard and Maria Stark. Tony would learn about Arno and also find out that he was actually the adopted son of the couple. Arno first uses the mantle of Iron Man in 2019 in the 2018 series Tony Stark Iron Man in issue number 19. Arno as Iron Man ended up in a fight with Tony Tony during the seeming robot revolution, believing that the only way to solve the issue of humans versus AI was to enslave the human population. It makes sense if you're following Arno through that story. Tony was forced to then stop his brother by trapping him in his virtual armor and placing him in a dreamlike virtual reality where he was seen as a hero. I'm sure that won't end up ending badly for Tony in years to come. Right? It's not like Donald Blake was living in a virtual reality where he was happy and then realized it was fake and then escaped and then tried to kill all the Thors or anything like that. That that totally didn't happen, guys. Number three, infamous Iron Man. Maybe one of the most evil, but also somehow one of the best at the same time was infamous Iron Man. This was when Dr. Doom stepped up to the plate to replace Iron Man after his defeat in Civil War II, which of course left him in a comatose state. So many comas. Two figures rose up to replace Tony at that time, one being Ironheart, AKA young genius Riri Williams, and another being Dr. Doom, who became infamous Iron Man. While Ironheart was more the heroic counterpart of the two, Doom also learned more and more about what becoming a hero entailed through his journey. And while he was ruthless as Iron Man, in the end he did kind of become a hero. However, this is still Doctor Doom we're talking about here, and eventually he left the mantle to return to Latveria and his life of villainous schemes and plots back to the old status quo. <laughs> 
killed. And because this is still Doctor Doom underneath the armor, I think we can count him as an evil alternate. No. Number two, Cancer vs. Iron Man. This version of Iron Man was also corrupted, though not by the controversial story arc of the 90s event, The Crossing, but instead by the many angled ones. He hails from the reality of Earth 10011. Here, Iron Man became corrupted by the Cancer verse after Marvel made a deal with the many angled ones, which would cure him of his cancer. Death no longer existed in this reality, which did not bring about a paradise, but instead a hellish dimension. Iron Man became loyal to Marvel, joining his Revengers team. It was Iron Man who also defeated Hulk in this reality, capturing Quasar, aka Wendell Vaughn, who had come to this reality from Earth 616 and had been attacked by the Hulk, which is why Iron Man had to be like, no Hulk. No. Taken Quasar with me. Iron Man would join his fellow Revengers in their attempt to invade Earth 616, but in the end, they would be defeated. Whew. Number 1. Dark Cold Iron Man One of the darkest versions of Iron Man to ever exist at this point in comics, who starts out as an optimistic inventor and quickly becomes overtaken by his own invention, twisted, driven insane till the point when he starts to harm others with the love of his own iron suit, comes from the Dark Hold Iron Man comic. Here Iron Man builds his faded suit, but realizes too late that the suit is overzealous with its protection. It doesn't just seek to protect Tony while he's inside the suit, but seeks to protect him always by kind of keeping him inside the suit. The suit heals him from the inside, but removes his skin whenever he takes parts of the suit off. Tony believes the issue is that the suit thinks iron skin is better than human skin, and so it decides to remove it. However, after compulsively putting the whole defective suit on, including the helmet, it begins to dissolve Tony's skin and then his skull as well. He basically becomes fully bonded with and reliant on the suit. Driven insane, he believes everyone should have an iron suit, and attempts to have the whole world basically join him, including Happy, Jarvis, and his love interest and assistant in this story, Pepper Potts. It's really dark. Ah. What evil versions of Iron Man are your favorite? Who do you think is the most evil version? Do you prefer learning more about multiversal alternates or alternate characters who have held the mantle in that main continuity? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, you stay nerdy YouTube.